welcome to today's episode of the Group X Podcast. I'm your host, Tony Zanato. And if you haven't yet done so, hit that follow button so you never miss another episode. Today, I'll be talking to Vic Bellino, trainer and presenter for Les Mills Age Pacific. We discuss being authentic and true to yourself, teaching programs that really fit who you are and not trying to force fit a program, and how to be 100% you and why. So grab your favorite beverage, sit back and enjoy the show. Vic, thank you so much for joining me on the show. Thanks for coming on and, and having a chat with me. I appreciate your time. Oh, thank you for having me. You're welcome. Hey, let's kick this off. I and my listeners and everyone that's out there want to know how you got into the fitness industry. Where did it all begin for you? Well, it all started, I guess, back in school. I was um, wanting to become a full-time tennis player. So I uh, trained and trained and trained. And then went full time when I finished school. I wanted to be playing on the women's circuit, and I um I did a couple of they're called satellite tours. So you go around Australia, you play satellite tours, mm-hmm. and you know I trained every day, a couple of hours in the morning, evening, and then I think my uh, realization I came to a head when I realized that you know, you have to be doing this at about 12 to 13, starting a full-time career much earlier because it's really competitive. I don't know anyone who's ever tried to do a professional yeah. sports um, career. You have to start early. Like people were quitting school. Martina Hingis was, you know, there when she was 14. They study while they're on, on, on traveling, playing wow. tennis. Okay. Yeah. So yep. I started a bit late, my full-time tennis career at about 17, 18. Yep. And so... <laughs> I quickly realized that you, you need money to survive. So yep. I had to get a, I had to get a job and I got a job at this gym down the road. Um, it was health and it was specific health and sport and fitness or something or other. I yep. was 17 yep. and the Broncos, the Broncos used to train there. So I thought it was the best job in the world. Yep. Wally Lewis <laughs> and Alan Lang used to walk in and Steve ran off and I used to just think it was the best job. Excellent. So I started on reception there and I, you know, turned 18 and then I became a PT. Yep. And then I, I sort of saw people teaching classes and I don't think my GFM really gave me any encouragement at that time. And I thought, well, no, I'm probably quite determined and I think I can do that. Yeah, yeah. So that's when uh, my sort of adventure into the fitness industry started, but I've literally done every position you could imagine. Love it. So from receptionist all the way through, you've given them all a... Given them all a crack. Yeah, yeah. I've been I've been a PT. I've been a club manager. I've been a sales consultant. I've, you know, I've done it all. Is this all through manager in, independence, or is this through chains that you've actually experienced chains, these roles? Independence. Oh wow, the everything. whole lot. Wow, the whole lot. Yeah. Here I was being naive, thinking that you were just a group fitness instructor that come along. I think that's fantastic that you yeah. have that experience and that knowledge from yeah. everyone, from the receptionist right through to a club manager and. That understanding. I even did that... a couple of shifts on child mining, Tony. No way. Yeah, You've done everything. I've is, done it all. Let, let me ask the question then. Is there anything in a gym that you haven't done? Is there any I, role that uh, you haven't no. had? Okay. No. Right. Now I, I'm going to say, <laughs> I'm going to say, I'm the one that feels a little bit, uh, yeah, you, you've got more experience than what I have in this. So maybe it should be you asking me questions. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. No, I love that. It's It shows that you've actually... You're an all-rounder and you actually have a skill set that I'm going to say will probably help you being a group fitness instructor because you actually understand the people that are in front of you from every different aspect, from from every role within a gym, which is vital to understand. I think, and this is nothing against group fitness instructors, but I believe that having the knowledge that you have is an advantage over most that are out there. I agree 100% with that because when I walk into any gym that I'm teaching at, there is not a day that I don't walk into a gym and say hello to the reception staff. Yep. I don't acknowledge the PTs like because I know what it's like to be those yep. people. Yep. So if there's an instructor that used to walk into the gym and ignore me at reception, I think, oh, wow, yeah. you know, like I'm, yep. I'm a person too. So I say yep. hello to everybody and I know. 
That's brilliant. What every position feels like. Yeah. That's awesome. I love that. So get let's get back on track here. Sorry, I've got a little bit sidetracked then. <laughs> teaching teaching group fitness. What was your first introduction to group fitness and, and how did that sort of come about? Uh I probably just like, I guess, lots of other instructors started participating and realized that, I wow, I love this. Yep. This feels really good. And, um, okay, what can I do first that, you know, I might not be too unco at? I know and the, don't take any offense to this, any RPM instructors, but I chose RPM first. Yep. So I trained on RPM 7 and I did RPM and it was my thing. I was like, this is awesome. This is so good. And... Yeah, that was my first program. I don't even teach it anymore, but it was my first program. RPM seven. That was yeah. like so early that that was like still the night train. <gasps> still, that's that's like, wow. That's the early, 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 early stuff of of working out what what the program still was back when Mike was still trying to work out what we do here. I think yeah. things were called light revs and not not like hill climbs and all that kind of stuff as they are no, now. No, it that's, wasn't. I don't yeah. even know what the lingo is today. Oh, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. Where So that was the first program that you trained in. Where, yeah. Where did, then, you, um, where did you teach it? Where Whereabouts was that at? At Jindalee. Uh, Jindalee. Um, there's a gym. that It went through many different chains. It was Club Pacific Health and Fitness and then it was um, Zest Health Clubs and then it was Janet. So it's gone through a couple of yep. different names, but it was Club Pacific Health and Fitness and then it became Zest Health Clubs. Yep. And that's when I really started to sort of add programs to my re- uh, my resume. Yep. Yeah, yep. repertoire. Yeah, yep. cool. And then, so when with yeah, you, it- take me back to your uh, your in- your initial module training. Can you remember who you had for your initial module training? Uh, who was your trainer? Joe Wade was my RPM. Now I remember trainer. that name, but I cannot remember that face. He's um, multi uh, trainer. Uh, now lives in New Zealand. Just big smile. Um, you might remember it was so long ago. It was probably uh, two thousand and I'm guessing two thousand and two or three. Okay. And I'm going to say I I probably would have met at one of the workshops somewhere um, because that name sounds really familiar, but I just cannot picture a cannot put a face yeah. to that name at the moment. And, and with the trainers back in those days, it was so um, uh, the passion and the yep. the Les Mills, uh, you know, culture was so just deep within them. Yeah. It, yeah, it was really um, inspiring and yep. motivating and just, yeah. Awesome. It was awesome. This is the Group X Podcast. Now, your, your training, did you pass? Did you... Did you pass the shadow? Were you withheld? How did it go for you? Being, being <laughs> no, something passed, that was – You did. Well done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How did you find the training though? Sort of coming from – from you'd experienced other positions within the gym, but coming into a group fitness environment and, and understanding a program in the way that it's taught, how did you cope with it? How did you, how did you go? Did you understand it all? Did it make sense? Was it gelling with you or, or not? Oh, look, I think um, I just – I'm just going to give you a bit of a heads up that I have the worst memory yeah. <laughs> in history. So if you ask me, <laughs> if you, <laughs> I'm going to not have a good memory. But I do remember at the time it just being a lot more than I thought was involved in instructing classes. Yeah. I thought, yeah. you know, as everyone does, oh, you just get up there, don't you, and just yeah. talk yeah. with the music on. Oh, it's yeah. that easy, That's you know. That's how you do it, yeah. <laughs> That's how you do it. It was a lot more involved than I thought, yeah. but still it didn't deter me from just loving these programs and yeah. wanting to teach yeah no i think that was the, the thing and I, I think i've chatted to a couple of the other guys in relation to this where it's been uh, that first weekend is so can be so daunting and so overpowering i'm walking in there and going okay I, I, especially if you've never done a training module before you don't know really what to expect you know you walk in there and you're in a room of you know anywhere between six to say 16 odd people and you sort of, you know, well, what I do anyway is I sort of sit in a room anyway and work out where I sit in the hierarchy of what's going on in the room <laughs> and different personalities and sort of, yeah. you know, you sort of suss it all out and work out where and, okay, yeah, who can, what can I say to who and all that kind of stuff. But then when the training starts, it just used to shut me up and put me in my place of going, okay, this is different. And I remember RPM, because RPM was my first as well, that it was, it was, 
very very confronting in the fact of hang on a second you've you've given me music we've done a class and i'm used to doing classes now you've given me music and you've also given me this booklet that tells me what i've got to do and when that relates to the music hang on a second i'm a mm-hmm. bloke i know it'll lift heavy things and i can get on a bike and i can pedal but this is going to be a bit of a challenge because you're going to want me to talk <laughs> while i'm while i'm on a bike and i'm i'm, I'm smart <laughs> Okay, <laughs> and I, what? I exactly. I just remember sort of going, okay, yeah, we can do this. But by the end of that weekend, being able to put it all together and present a track. Now, I, I was held withheld to shadow. I think it was back then. Um, so it wasn't a fail, but it wasn't a pass. It was that sort of in between. On as long as you've got someone to teach with, you know, you can get up on stage and do a track or two, and until you're ready, and then we'll, you know, tick you off to do it all. Yeah. Um, and it was yeah that that whole well, okay, I I can do this by the end of the the second day, yes, there's something in this that I've actually got a skill set where I can, I can mm. do this. I can achieve. Did yeah. you did you feel much of that? Can you remember? Can you did you feel much of that going Look, into? Look, I it? I had to find something else that I was good at when tennis when my tennis career failed. So I had to be good at this. Yep. So unfortunately, during my career, um, I've had a really bad character trait of being a perfectionist and and you know that kind of thing. So the I guess the option of failing wasn't really an, uh, a, a solution. It wasn't yep. going to be yep. for me. I, I yep. couldn't. Yep. Um, luckily, as I've gotten older, that has dropped away a little bit and it's okay to. Yep. Uh, it's, you okay know, to not, it's okay to. Yeah. 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 But back then it was not an option. So I had to sort of absorb everything I could from the instructors in my gym. And, yeah, it was it was daunting. But I, for some reason – through all of that, I've had this belief that I'm like, I can do this. Like I'm yep. capable of this. It just, yep. you know, believing that. Belief in yourself is a huge extent. thing. Yeah. 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 But it doesn't always, it doesn't always come, but I just had to be good at something else. Yep. Because tennis didn't work out. No, I appreciate that. Appreciate that. Yeah. Can you remember your first class you taught? Yeah. I think I lost my breath and I couldn't yeah. talk. Yeah. I don't know if anyone's ever suffered that being on stage and then all of a sudden your breath just, you lose your breath and you can't breathe. Yep. And then you're just not able to speak properly and then your mouth gets all dry. Oh, dry mouth. Yes. That was was me. That was me. (laughs) Yeah. Nerves. Yes. It was so nerve wracking. I think I told Dallas this the other day that um, when I, when I put the mic on, I put it on upside down. So you know how you're wearing, (laughs) you know how you got your headset on now. Yes. Yeah. So that's how I put the mic on. (laughs) So instead of going back around the back of your head mm. and over your ears, it was over the top, like I was sitting in yes. the call center because I worked for Perfect. Telstra for, you know, seven years. So that for me was, well, that's how you wore a headset. <laughs> Even though that I had done, in, you know, the initial module training and I'd been on stage and, and <laughs> shadowed next to someone, when I walked into that room to teach my first class by myself, all of that disappeared, went out the room. So, you know, for, <laughs> I think it was... Uh, so common though. Yeah. It's that whole, uh, you, you you have so much confidence leading into it, but you can walk into that room and, as you said, get the dry mouth, get all the whole short of breath, the whole, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. It's almost like a panic attack sets in. 100%. But you've got to have that confidence to say to yourself, you know, I, I've got this. I can do this. You know, yeah. I'm trying. They're not. You know what? And if we screw it up and if, if that's not the right curry, then it should have been. You know, I remember saying that a couple of times of, yeah, Tony, if that wasn't the Cory, then you want, today it was because that's what you remembered and, and that's okay. And that's, so, yeah. that's okay. <laughs> didn't happen that. that often, Les Mills. Let me tell you that. It didn't happen that often, but uh, when it did. <laughs> <laughs> Disclaimer. Yeah. Disclaimer. <laughs> we can always edit these oh. things out, can't we? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah. So what was your second program that you taught? Or you, or you, uh, you, you got trained in? Body say. pump, I think. Body pump. Uh, See, this is where my memory is terrible. It's either body pump. They were very close consecutively, body pump and body step. Okay. Yep. Funny enough. And then literally did all my programs within a year and a half. So oh, it was wow. body pump, body step and body attack straight after that. And then wow. obviously much later, grit. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, pretty much within a year and a half or two years, I did like RPM, body pump, body step, body attack. Let me ask you the question then with RPM, pump, Step attack and grit. Which is your favorite now, these days? Which would you, you ask for the presenters that come on the show this question? Yeah, it's like asking your child, they which is your favorite child? <laughs> <laughs> I 
Okay. So <laughs> I love all my different programs for different reasons, but the one, I'll be honest, yep. the one that gives me the most natural, most authentic joy yep. that comes from my true self is body attack. Okay. Yep. Is that, <laughs> is that and, and I, I love that because that's, that's, as you just said, it's authentic. It's an authentic response to that question, which I appreciate because can, can you elaborate on that? Why? Tell us why. It just, the, it's just being, auth- being authentic to who you are is, is really important when you teach. Yep. I don't even have to try yep. when I'm teaching body attack. I don't even have to, I don't even have to work hard to feel anything in body attack it just comes I don't know how to explain it and maybe it's because I had a strong sporting background and I love music like I'm a really big music person and so the sporty moves and I always had to be the fittest so body attack and I don't know just just I can't explain it no that makes sense it just is with what you've said it makes sense you remember I've I'm uh, I'm I'm married to uh, to Rach and I understand, I understand this. I understand we cried this on stage together. Yeah. <laughs> Rach and I cried on stage together in track eight of Body Attack 100. Like it was, yeah. it, was un- yeah. it was uncontrollable. Yeah. We not all three of us, Brayden, Rach, and I just could not yeah. control that moment. Yeah. No, but, yeah, I I understand that. As I said, I I get it because um, I understand. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, totally. <laughs> what now, now that, that's that's the question of you know who's your favorite child type thing. But why did you decide yeah. you wanted to do so many programs so quickly as well? What was that 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 was um, it? So I didn't have an easy road. I didn't decide or or choose. I I, I auditioned back in the day. We used to have audition yep. auditions for programs. I got knocked back twice, and I thought, no, nah, no, that's not me. I'm not going to give up. Yep. So I didn't give up. Yep. And then uh, Nathan Jones at the time was the yes. program director for Body Attack and I got a – even I got recommendations to turn up at Q1 workshops to yep. shadow. Yep. It was our big moment to kind of shine and, of course, her and I just hit – we just hit like heartstrings straight away. And then – yeah, Nathan Jones put me through the school of hard knocks. It yep. was, it was, it was, it was hard. Like you had to earn your place back in those days. Yep. And then Tommy K was the yep. Les Mills Asia Pacific um, training, manager, or training manager at the time. And yep. He said, "Oh, yep. you know, um, normally you know trainers have two programs that they do." And I was like, "Great." Um, he said, "If you're gonna, you know, try out for another program," so I said, "Oh, I'd like to do Body Step." Yep. Because I don't, I don't think I even got into Body Pump at the time. And so I sent, he said, if you're going to send a video in for Body Step, you better send in your best video, like your best, yep. and send it into Chris Hutton, yep. and we'll see how you go. And so I sent in the best video I could possibly send. I did it four times. Yep. <laughs> four times I did this video, and I sent it into Chris, and I and I received a um like a letter saying we'd like to offer you a position. Yeah, and I was. Yeah, not expecting it, but yep. yeah, it was just a thing in those days. Have two programs. Yeah, yeah. So when when did you join the team? When did you originally? Two thousand eleven. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And so it was it was an attack first. Attack first, attack and then first, shortly yeah. after that, six months afterwards, body step. Yep. And then grit launched in Australia, and I said yes. to ATL, oh, like, I really want to, like, I really want to try out for this, and so I went to my to grit two. Yep. I trained on grit two, and yep. I was like. Yeah, I, you know, I put my letter in of um, to AT that yep. I'd like to apply for this because I think it's the most awesome program in the world. Um, and at the time, hit it, it, it still is, you know, for hit. And I felt like I was really um, made for that program. Yep. yep. And I, yeah, and and so um, he put me through after my first training. I was like, this is awesome. Yeah. That's... And then I didn't really, I, 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 like, I didn't mean to have three or four programs, but then I. I felt like I'd done pump for the longest and I was like, why am I not a trainer and a presenter in this program? <laughs> I want to do this program as well because I love them all. Yep. So, yeah, that's how it happened. Look, I, I've got to say, I'm, and I'm not saying this because you, you're you're in front of me on Zoom or, or that I, I know you <laughs> a little bit better than maybe some of the others that I've chatted to. You're, you come across to me as an exceptionally talented person but a very driven person. Yep. 
And what you've just said, and I know I haven't known that background of you from your tennis and all that kind of stuff. I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, I look at that and I think the discipline that you had around your training with tennis and what you had in your your first, your teen years and that kind of stuff, um, you've carried on through into what you're doing in the group fitness space. Am I correct? Yes. And yes, I, I'm so old school that I want to um, achieve things by so much hard work that I, I look back at that and go, wow, I like, I earned that. It was like blood, sweat and tears. Yeah. And yeah. I, I am driven. Um, body attack was the hardest because Nathan Jones really pushed us through our paces back then. It was like, uh, you were, you were you earning your stripes. a whole push-up track on our toes. Yeah. You like were earning your push-up stripes. Track for body track. Yeah. yeah, but I don't want to ever get anything easy. And I never have. I've never been a favorite. I've never been the, the person that just gets given anything. Yeah. So I guess that's made me have to work hard. Yep. I don't, you know, I don't get given anything yep. in this life, yep. Yep. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. So yeah, it's just made me work hard. Yeah. This is the Group X Podcast. Hey, on, on training and presenting, what, obviously presenting came first before the training, would I be right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. When you did your first training module, mm-hmm. how did that go? Oh, there was um, definitely hiccups and there was definitely feelings of, oh my gosh, I didn't do the river dance as good as Steve Clough. Yep. And I didn't do the hongi as authentic as Nathan Jones. And <laughs> so, you know, I felt really, because um, I had to do so many, I had to give up so many weekends just sitting and shadowing on yep. modules yep. so I really did my hours but yeah in the beginning I was like wow you know I've got a lot of work to do and I didn't do it as well as my favorite mentor Steve Clough you know Nathan yep. Jones Chris Hutton were always my favorites but I just had to keep practicing my uh, what do you call it what do you, your trade like yep. I had to really yep. Yep. practice talking in front of people yeah so yeah the first one was a little bit shaky yeah did, did it, did it? I don't even remember my first one, Tony. Don't ask me because I don't know. Okay. <laughs> What's happened to your mind? My I goodness. <laughs> Two teenagers, full-time yep. work and classes. That's yep. what happened in my brain, I think. <laughs> I love yeah. it. Can I, I'm going to ask a question and this won't go into the, 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 the episode. I promise I'll edit this out. That's all right. I don't how, know. how old are you? I'm 44 in July. You can put it into a podcast. Okay. I don't care. No, that's right. I'm 45. 44 and, in July. That's right. My, my, I have moments exactly the same as you. So when you're saying this right now, I'm like, <laughs> I remember everything in this industry. But if you asked me about telco and what I did before moving into the fitness industry, I've got no fucking idea. It's gone. Well, I, I do not remember any of that whatsoever. It's I yeah. feel bad sometimes that I don't remember little details. <laughs> but oh my gosh. Yeah. No, it makes yeah. sense though. You teenagers, it's, I, I yeah. Look, I, you know, I have a, we have a six-year-old here. So, you know, that's, that's. <laughs> what? Sass- You've got a lot going on. Oh, yeah. Sass and attitude at the moment is, is intense, but yeah. I love anyway. that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. We'll get back on track. I can edit that bit out. Um, <laughs> that's all right. Your first, your first training module was, what, what was your first training module? Which program was it? Did you tell me? Uh, body step. Body Step was your first training program. Body Step was my first training program. Okay. See, you had your brain and then. <laughs> see, see, yeah, see your brain know, ticking over going, hang thinking, on a second, was which was the first step. one? <laughs> yes, out of, out of then, all the training that you have done with people and of the programs, which is your favorite to train in? Oh, I, you know what? Uh, it, it, it's not even a program that I used to train. It was just um, back in the day, we used to have two-day trainings and we used to certify them on day day two yep. and give them a certificate yep. and um that used to bring me to tears when i'd see them from day one go to day two and pass yeah. and the trials and tribulations that they went through so i know it wasn't a for, for favorite program it was more so my favorite part of the training i yep. guess because I, yep. I, I for a trainer um 
I know you can have your favorite programs, but when you're training, the, the content is different, but the process is the same. Yes. So you're bringing yep. people into content that they've never seen before. And you're, you're sort of um, giving them the tools to be uh, or, or the tools to get up on stage. And then that first day when they first present, it's so um, uh, shaky for them. They're so nervous. Anxiety is so high and you just feel for them. But you know the day two. Yep. They're going to just bloom. So you're not really worried about day one. That's my favorite part. That was, yeah, the content delivery or the content is not so much the the thing. It's the, it's the individual that gets the journey that you see them go on. The journey. Yeah. 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 Used to make me emotional. Yeah. Love. Are you still training at the moment? Are you still doing training modules or not? I have taken a back step. Just because I am now doing that as a full-time job, a train, trainer and assessor, yep. um, thank, thank, fully, all my experience at Les Mills got me a full-time role yeah. in the, you know, in training and assessing. But yep. um, I do day threes and yeah, just with COVID and and yes, everything it's made everything yep. a little bit um, time time poor. Yeah, yeah, you know, yep. and I think I'll let all the young ones. Yep. get their hands on modules now. You yeah. know, it's their yep. time. I, I like hearing that because I, yeah, chatting to a lot of instructors as I still do, even though I'm not teaching myself, there's still a big network of people that I chat to and there's a lot of new faces that are coming through and I think it's great that the new people, new people, that sounds really bad, Tony, the newer instructors or newer <laughs> people on the team are getting an opportunity. You know, and it's not, not saying that, that, those of you that have been doing it for a while need to step down and step away. You know, you're, you're if you're able to mentor the new trainers and help them out in their process of doing what you guys have done for so many years, I think that's vital because they need that experience and they need that guidance from you guys. But I also also love the fact that you have come to that realization in yourself of sort of going, you know what, I've I've shifted a little bit from what I was doing, and whether it was COVID that did it or whatever it was. The fact that you realise that you know, I want to use the skills that I have to do something mm. different, and but still stay relevant in the industry as well. Yeah, I, I think, think I think, I think that's key. Important. Yeah, mm. yeah, I think it's good. We, that, we we relied on someone to give us yes some belief yes. and some chance. Yeah, is it Nathan Jones? Yeah, <laughs> it, it was many. It was so yeah. many. Yeah. yeah, and like Chris Hudden, you know, um, and um, Nathan Jones at the time, and just so many people that I admired watching. Yeah, and they, yeah, gave me they just. You, of course, I didn't get an easy road. I got the hard road, but still, I got a, a road. Yep, yep. You were given an opportunity, and you, yeah, you, you made a belief. Yeah, yeah. You 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 turned that into something. From the opportunity that you're given, which I think is is brilliant. It's nice to hear. This is the Group X Podcast. What would you say your most favourable or best experience you've had in your journey so far would be? Every single time I got to travel for quarterly workshops and teach with other presenters and just going around teaching to instructors that were so happy to see you and teaching modules at remote areas where people didn't have the opportunity to you know because people in metro cities have the opportunity to go to workshops four times a year when we would go to places like darwin and um oh gosh i've even been to mount isa for a module they are so overwhelmed with just being able to have you there in person and it's so um it's just humbling yep. you know you're like they are happy i'm here like yep. i'm just me yeah like it's just me i'm just coming out to teach a class to them but they're like so happy to see you and and that's what um i love about this job is just the friendships that i've made with other presenters like this genuine just love there between all of us yeah teaching and having like this is a job are you joking <laughs> like this is like I, we I, go around and I we get just paid to do this are you get, like, what <laughs> yeah like i've had yep. so many amazing experiences on stage just we'll be beaming our smiles would be from ear to ear with other presenters just teaching and making people happy yeah like it's just ridiculous it's not a job 
yeah. at all. So I love I loved traveling because I was obviously in the aviation industry. So traveling around, being with people, doing something that we're all passionate about. Yep. And yeah, just making lots of friends along the way, I guess. I'm sorry I don't have one moment no, for you. No, look. The, I mean, the, I've cried on stage quite a few times. Yeah, no, look, the, the thing is that there's, there's, you know, I, I would honestly say that if there's only one experience, then was it really, was it really enough? You know, the, the fact that you've had, <laughs> you've had multiple experiences with that kind of stuff shows that, you know, the, the journey that you've been on, the story that you've been able to share and passion that you've got around it you know there's not just oh you know what it was the mega quarterly workshop that we did there that was the best ever or you know it was the the filming event that we did in sydney or whatever it may have been there's been multiple of those things and i think that shows the real genuine passion that you have for what you do yeah yeah that's so many yeah so many moments oh, it's good though but it also shows that you you bloody love what you do yeah, yeah. You're, you're enjoying yeah. it it's not just oh yeah the others were all yeah they were all right but this one, this, oh, one's right. yeah. this one, so oh my God. You know? Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's yeah. No, it's, it's great when you have a group of people that um, are very passionate about what they do, very authentic. Yep. There's no, uh, you, it's very, if you're in this industry and you truly enjoy helping others, if there is anyone on, on the team or in your instructing uh, what do you call it, cohort that are in it for themselves, it shows. Yeah. Yes. You know, yeah. Yeah. like it's definitely a very outward um, industry yeah. at its best. You know, you have to be there for others. That's all you're there for pretty much. Yeah. If there's a bit of I mean, I enjoy it. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. yeah. If there's a bit of advice that you'd be able to, you, you could give an instructor. Not someone wanting to do what you've done. That's a question I've asked a lot of the others, but more so if if you were to give in some advice to an instructor, what would it be? I've given this in advice to a couple of instructors that I've either withheld or, you know, um, they've had to um, redo a day one or a day two. And I basically said to them that if this is what you want to do, genuinely this is what you want to do then don't give up yep you know like it, it's it's hard work and it's being knocked back a few times where you learn you you can't give up on something that you want to do like uh, if i gave up the first time that i didn't get through the audition i would never have experienced everything that i have yeah um also you have to it takes a while to be authentically you i can tell you that from experience like i was not always okay with making choreography mistakes on stage I was not okay with being a fool in the beginning I was such a perfectionist it, it takes it, it just take just you have to give it time yeah. it's not easy it's not easy yeah. it's harder than what people think yeah that's what I'd say there's you know out of the the your number 10 now episode number 10 out of the the 10 people that I've chatted to so far the one thing to me that that has come through quite strong is that you need to be you yeah in order for this to work you need to be 100 percent you don't try and be someone else and it's it's when i've chatted to all of the others around initial module training and when you have your first initial module training that you as a trainer presenter deliver or when you're going through that that process and being signed off <clears throat> pardon me being signed off as a trainer presenter um, is to to be one hundred percent you. Don't try and do it in the way that somebody else will deliver it. Don't try and do it in the way that you think that it wants to be done. But be you. Be true to you. Stay on track and just do you. And that's when it actually all seems to fall into place. There's a lot of people that have have started their journey and tried to be someone else. It doesn't work. Don't it be doesn't. don't be someone else. Be you and be, as you said, authentic and be true to yourself. And that's when it all starts to fall into place. You know, and it's mm. it's been interesting with the ten of you that are all trainers and presenters that that sort of is the the experience or the journey that you sort of went through on, you know, that whole trainer process of, yeah, okay, I got there and I thought that I'd do it this way and and 
the feedback that you're almost given was don't. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't actually, don't do no. it that way. You know what? The content, don't as you said it. before, the content is the content. You know, the outcome is the outcome. Yeah. How you get there, that's a different story. But the journey that you were seeing your participants go on from day one through to day two, it didn't matter how they did it. It just mattered that they did it and they went through mm-hmm. that journey because that's what be- makes them become them. You know, yeah. they don't, you don't want another 16 Vicks out there. Mm-mm. I don't want another 16 Tonys out there. Christ. God, I don't want God, another God, one Jesus of me Christ out there. Them. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> it's, it's, have you, as you, as you, you, you come across trainers and instructors, I should say, not trainers, but instructors, the big thing is, guys, just be yourself. But that's the hardest thing. Yeah, oh, look, it's. <laughs> For most people, it's yeah. like the hardest thing. Yeah. I'll be completely honest. It's putting yourself out there. It's putting yourself out there for scrutiny. You know, people are going to scrutinize you. People are going to look at it and go, oh my God, you're crap. Oh yeah. Wow. That was amazing. I'll be honest and say with this podcast, yeah, the same thing, the same thing goes through my mind before I I press record on every single one of these. When I'm chatting to you guys is someone one day is going to turn around and go, Tony, this is shit. What are you doing? And you should have said this or that was dumb or whatever it may be. The same time I go, you know what? I'm giving it a shot. It's a journey. I've but learned also, so much. You're really from... authentic. You, you, this is what you want to do. Like yeah. you felt this is what you needed to do. Yeah. As long as that's at the core of your being and at the core of your values, you have to know what your values are. Yeah. It takes a while to get to be your authentic you. I think it's the hardest thing. Yeah. I think that it really is. Yeah. I think though that that's if there's, there's advice that I want to give to any instructors that are listening as well is it's just be you. You know, if you want to go down this path of being a trainer and presenter, you want to go and do it. You've got to strive for it. Yes, you've got to train for it. You've got to push for it. You've got to make it happen. But be you. Yeah. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen because you are you. You're not trying to be a Vic. You're not trying to be a Tony. You're not trying to be a Chris. You're not trying to be an AT. You're just trying to be you. And as more authentic you can be, that's when the opportunities are going to start coming up. Because not only will those in positions that uh, training managers start to see you and other trainers, presenters start to see you, but it comes out in your own classes. Mm, Oh, absolutely. The people that are in front of you day to day, I'm going to say, are more important than those people in a training session, as in if you're doing an initial module training, because you've got to stumble and you've got to be in front of those people day to day. If you can't be you Mm. in front of that 5.30 Tuesday afternoon class, mm. they're not going to gel with you. No. And if you can't get those people on board and loving what you're doing, no one else is going to love you for what you're doing either. It starts Agreed. from that every single, that moment you walk into that class, as we said, you know, we've had those moments of <sighs> losing your breath and, and, lo- <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. But yeah. they're the moments where you get to stumble, graze your knees, fall and improve on you. Those guys are going to love you or they're going to hate you. But they, yeah. well, they see right through it. That's the thing. Exactly. Participants, yeah. instructors you teach to, they see right through the fake. Yeah. They see through it. It's so obvious. They don't like you. They're not going to come back. No. Yep. So you, 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 to me is it's you, you, the people that are in front of you daily are the ones you need to more impress than, than those that are higher up the food chain or higher up the corporate chain that you want to try and impress. Nail those guys yeah. in front of you. The rest of it <laughs> is just going to, yeah, it's going to fall into place, isn't it? It's just going to, it's going to happen and be easy. The journey will be a lot easier for you if you are yeah. you a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, tell me, what does the future hold for you within the group, group X space in, in, in the fitness industry? What are you? A very long time still teaching. Yeah. I can't give up yet. I still love it so much. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, I've I just I've never given it up, not for one minute since I started yep. in 2002, 2001, 2002. I've never stopped for a minute, never had a – just, you know, like I I can't see myself giving up anytime soon. Yep. I'm going to pull back a little bit from training because, you know, there's, there's now more um, – people out there that need obviously like we spoke before yeah. that need the opportunity and I've done my 10 years of training so I'm still going to teach and yeah I, I will teach as long as I can yep brilliant brilliant <laughs> I'm going to say there's a lot of people out there that don't want you to stop so don't yeah you know, you'll have a lot of followers in 
up in Queensland that, that know you and be like, if Vic stops teaching, I'm, that's it, I'm not coming to the gym, I'm going to leave. So God, you're not, I don't know one, about that. <laughs> one, you're not allowed to, you've got to stay around. But no, you, I think you're right with that. There's, there's, you'll know when it's time to stop. You'll, you'll know when it's time to to yeah, pull away from like a week, I just taught a workshop on the weekend with Eve, and honestly, um, she said something that just like um, really stuck in my head. That when you teach um, with someone that you trust and that you both have like this um, authentic reason for doing what you do, yeah. it is so freeing. Yeah. Like we just, just nothing could. Yeah. Um, come between us and the yeah. teaching was just so authentic and real and that's yeah. nothing's that's gonna what throw I'd like every track. instructor yeah, yeah and every instructor should feel comfortable being themselves and being free yeah in those moments so yeah it was just um i won't be giving up anytime soon yeah love it this is the group x podcast is there any other advice you want to pass on to any instructors that you you may we didn't cover then or that you sort of go, you know what, I want to get this out there to these guys? I would just, oh, look, no real advice. I'm no, yep. I'm no expert, but um, I've always just believed in, um, especially because we are in the fitness industry, um, it's just really um, appreciating that people come to your class for every different reason that there is and um if the two girls down the back want to have a bit of a chit chat that's okay because that's their time and if um Mavis over there wants to do her own choreography that's okay as well it's it's okay because people just are there for a sense of belonging and a sense of fun and and you know, uh, a lot of instructors may, if they're new to the industry, may get annoyed at those two girls chatting down the back, but that may have been the only half hour that they have in the day away from their desk or, you know, like oh, it just let nothing phase you in a yep. class. Yep. Let people do what they want to do. Let them have, you're there to give them a safe space yeah. to be healthy and to enjoy and don't worry if that person is pre-queuing with you. Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> You know, like, oh, oh I don't, yep. honestly, honestly, nothing phases me anymore. Yep. But when I first started instructing, all that stuff used to, oh, yeah, they're chatting. Oh, yep. that person left in the stretches. I don't care. They may have a baby at home they've yep. got to go feed. Yep. It just, nothing yep. phases me anymore. It's, it's just that, let them that, go. That 45 minutes, that hour or whatever it may be when they're in front of you, couldn't be the only thing that they've got that day that they have control over. They could have, yeah. and as, as I don't mean, don't mean anything by this when I say this out to these people listening, is that no, they, they could be in the worst relationship ever in their lives and that can be their only outlet for their entire day where it's they're in control. So if I remember being being exactly. teaching RPM, they're on a bike and they're doing the curry wrong, I was I, I used to get frustrated and think, what the, what the fuck are you doing? Excuse me, yeah. you, you in the second row. And I'd turn the music down and be like, what are you doing? Yeah, and, and embarrass them. It's like, hang on a second. I would let that negativity of one person – ruin the experience for everybody else in that class yeah. instead of my energy sort of going, well, you know what? They're safe. They're here. That's the main thing. They've got other stuff going on. That's completely 100%. fine. Use that energy, Tony, with everybody else that's around. Just make sure that I understand and the people next to her or her, her or him understand that they might be doing something that is annoying, but it's not going to ruin the entire class. Their yeah. workout is their workout. As long as what you're doing is okay and safe and effective, then roll with that. Yeah. yeah I remember it's just it's, yeah, keep going. I remember sorry. I could share a story with it. I remember in North Sydney when I was group fitness manager at Fitness First in North Sydney, that I had I was teaching a boxing class on Monday night at six thirty, I think it was. And at quarter at six thirty five there was an RPM class going on next door because we had them staggered five minutes so that if you miss out there you can run in there and you know, yeah, all that kind of shit. <laughs> I had the instructor get off his bike and walk into my boxing class and say, you need to get in there and tell that dick in the second row that he's got to do as I'm telling rah, rah. And I was like, dude, your mic's on for starters. I can hear the music from next door and I'm in a boxing class here. You're interrupting my class, but your mic's still on. The person that you're talking about has heard every word you've just said, but so is everybody else in that class. 
Next thing you know, that guy walks into my boxing class as well. <laughs> I was like, oh, guys, no. not now. I'm actually got a class out. I'll talk to you, you know, at 7.30 when we're finished. You handle it for now. You need to get out here and do it. No, I don't. I've actually got a class going on with 45 people in here. We had a boxing class. They're focused on what we're doing. Wow. You know, it was that whole, yeah, I was stunned that that instructor did that, but I was also stunned that the member who obviously had an issue with this instructor did what he did in that position because it's like, guys, hang on. It's group fitness for fuck's sake. This, you're not going to die because something's been done the wrong way. This is this is Group X. Yeah. There's nothing here that that anyone's going to be be hurting themselves from if something's done a little bit left of field. But if someone's standing up when you're sitting down, or, or sitting down when you're standing up when you're on a bike, so what? They're still so pedaling. What? They're still yeah. exercising. Why would you Why would you ruin a class for thirty other people or however many other people are in there? Just because one person was doing the wrong thing. Like, no. Yeah. Not needed. I mean, it's, it's just let go of your ego and just be kind. Yep. Like, I have been judged before in my time and it's not nice. It just, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Let Drop your ego as an instructor yep. and just let people be. Yeah. Be kind. You don't know what kind of day they've had. Yes. Yeah. Don't know what's going on, so yeah. just let them be. You know what? They rocked yeah. up. They're another person that's, that's in your right. class. Yeah, it helps your numbers they're for your there. class. Brilliant. Yeah. Let them go. Yeah. So that's my advice. Yeah. No, love, <laughs> <it>. <laughs> love it. Big thank you so much for coming on the show and having a chat with me. I greatly appreciate your time and, and you oh. sharing your experiences and your story on how you got into it and what, you're, what you've been through as well, mate. Thank you. Thanks thank you so, so much, much for asking me. You're welcome. <laughs> I was like, oh, me. <laughs> Thanks, Tony. <laughs> you're doing a great, oh, amazing, amazing podcast for people that want to get in touch with this. So we really appreciate it. No, thank you. Thank you.